for Augustine, sin is beyond choice. It's inevitable. It's part of our nature. And so too is salvation. It's something beyond our own choice. Humans can't save themselves. They require external grace. For Pelagius, the story of Genesis in which Adam and Eve disobey God is a paradigm, an example of what every human does. Every human is born the way Adam and Eve were first created in the garden, with free will either to obey or to disobey God, to be sinful or to be righteous. And every human is born the way Adam and Eve were created and endowed with this free choice. And each individual human who sins imitates Adam, disobeys just the same way that the original humans did. For Augustine, this was an event that changed the course of history. The first humans were created with perfectly free natures. But when they sin, when they disobeyed, it corrupted their flesh. It corrupted their flesh. They realized their nakedness and covered themselves. And their new corrupted nature would be transmitted through the seed of Adam to all subsequent generations. And each generation inherits anew the weakness, the twisted will of Adam. Augustine, above all, bitterly attacks the simplistic psychology of Pelagianism. Augustine attacks the simplistic psychology of Pelagianism. Think about the psychology of, think about the simple question. What makes an act good? What makes an act good? Is it the act itself or the motivation? For Pelagius, it's the act. Don't sin, so don't sin. For Augustine, it's the motivation that matters. What matters is not that humans necessarily do good, but that they come to will to do good. Pelagius was a brimstone and fire preacher. Do good or what? Go to hell. Right? Do good or go to hell. Oh, and Pelagius loved preaching about hell. Augustine, for all of his pessimism and all of the darkness in Augustine's thought, is never one to emphasize hell. I <laughs> believes in it, certainly. But Augustine says, if you only do what's good because you fear hell, you don't love what is good. You just don't like fire burning you. Augustine's morality is about the transformation of the will, even the healing of the will. And Augustine, with this, reaches back deeply into the soil of Christian ethics, back to the Sermon on the Mount itself, whose central message is that morality is transformation. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Jesus says, does that mean don't kill people? No, Jesus says, don't even be angered. Does Jesus say, do good deeds for other people? Does Jesus say that in the Sermon on the Mount? Does he say, do good deeds for other people? He says what? Love other people. It's the deepest will, it's the motivation. In fact, Jesus says, should you give money to charity? Yes, but how should you do it? Secretly, because then you know that your only motivation is to do good itself because you love what is good. It reaches back into Paul's reading of Jesus' morality in Romans. What did Paul say? Be transformed. For Augustine, 
Christian ethics is about the transformation of the will. It's about becoming a new kind of creature. A loving, God-like creature. And is that possible in this life? No, he says. Not so long as you're in the flesh. You'll never be fully good. But that's what morality is. Pelagius focuses on doing good and believes that it's possible. He says, why would Jesus have given commandments if we couldn't follow them? What kind of morality would it be if we couldn't live up to it? Augustine isn't against free will. He thinks it's more complicated than Pelagius allows. He thinks that the human will can be more or less free. But for Augustine, the truly free man is one in whom reason and emotion become united into one, who does good because he loves the good. And you see these two very powerful and diametrically opposed theological positions worked out in the controversy between Augustine and Pelagius. And Augustine wins. His psychology is far more powerful. His reading of Christian morality taps directly into the message of Jesus and Paul. And his doctrine is accepted at church councils. Pelagius is condemned both church and empire accept Augustine's view.